Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today, guys, we're gonna go over how to install vCenter vSpare from VMware, uh, the latest and greatest version, which I think it's version six. The last time that I touched this type of environment or this topic was about four or five years ago. Uh, the last version that I played around with was vSpare 4.4, and that's a long time. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is get yourself a copy of the ISO or the OVA if you want to create a virtual machine environment of this. I'm going to be installing vSpare vCenter inside a Windows uh, OS. I'm running Windows Server 2012. I have three hypervisors, but I'm only going to add two hypervisors within my vCenter. So both of my hypervisors are running EXI uh, 5.5, and this one again is uh, ESXi 5.5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the installation file into my, uh, my virtual machine. So we're going to go to settings, and we are going to locate that vSpare file right here, and we're going to press OK, and we're going to click on the D drive to open it up. We're going to run the auto run. And the one that we want is vCenter server for Windows. We're going to click install and click on next. We're going to accept the terms, click on next. Uh, you have two options of the deployment type. You can either do embedded deployment or you could do external deployment. I would say best practice would be external deployment, but for now I'm doing embedded deployment. So let's click on next for that. Uh, we're going to get the site name. Now, the site name has to be a fully qualified domain name, okay? So that means you have to have a DNS running inside your environment. I don't have Active Directory and I don't have DNS running, so I'm going to use the IP address of this machine. So it's actually, let me click on here, 192.168.47.147. Oh, let me get the number lock on. There we go. Okay, so let's double check on that. And we'll do an IP config, and that's the IP address of this machine. And we're going to click next. Nice little warning stating that it's recommended to use the FQDN. I don't have a DNS, but it's okay. I'm only testing this stuff out. And I have 60 days to try it out, which is awesome. Uh, click OK. You get another warning because this virtual machine does not have uh, this IP address hardwired to it. It's not a static IP address. It's grabbing it from my DHCP. It's OK. For now, press OK. Uh, we are going to assign an IP address to our single sign-on. Again, you could add this vCenter into your domain controller and create groups and have um, like your domain admin to log in directly to this vCenter, but I'm not going to do that for now. The site name, I'm going to leave it as the default. The domain name is going to be this. We're going to click on next. From here, you can either use your Windows local system account or you can specify a user service account. I'm going to leave it as the default. And uh, we're going to click on next. And I'm going to use the embedded database. You could use a separate database, but again, this is a testing environment. Later on, most likely, I'm going to create a more production environment with a SQL database and I could add everything to here, but I'm not going to do that for now. So let's click on next. These are all the default ports that are going to be open. So make sure your firewall is configured correctly to allow uh, these common ports as well as your controller ports and your vCenter server ports to talk to each other within your environment. So we're going to click on next. Uh, default path is going to be here. You can relocate it. It's up to you. We're going to click on next again. Uh, I'm not going to accept the join uh, VMware customer experience improvement program. So let's click on that. Uh, this is all the goodness that's going to happen. And we are going to click install. All right, guys. So the installation is completed and it took forever. So I recommend if you start installing this stuff, go grab a cup of coffee or a tea because again, it takes forever. There's a bunch of services that needs to be installed behind the uh, behind the scenes. Uh, but one thing I forgot to tell you guys, you need to install .NET Framework 3.5 within your server. So now Windows Server 2012 R2, you can actually install that. So you need to go inside your server manager. You want to click on manage, add roles and features, click on next, next, and next again, next one more time. And then make sure that you have .NET Framework 3.5 features installed before you start the installation. I forgot to tell you guys that because if you don't have this, your installation won't work at all. Okay. Uh, we're going to cancel that. We're going to close this up. 
Now keep in mind, this is a single sign account that's going to allow you to log into your vCenter. Uh, you can launch the web or we could click finish. Now I'm going to launch the web and I'm going to install the client. Actually, let's close this up. I'm just going to close this up. Let's close this up. Yeah. Let's close that up. We're going to click on finish. And the reason why, because I don't need to go into the web to install the client because I can actually install the client within the installer. So let's click on here. Let's click on install. It's going to start extracting all the files that it needs to extract. And then we can start the installation of our vSpare or vCenter client so we can log in into our environment. Once we're logged into our environment, uh, I'm going to add both of my hypervisors that I have here up and running. These are two hypervisors, 152 and 153. And then uh, that's it. We're good to go. And then later on in future videos, we are going to do a little bit of vMotion and uh, fault tolerance, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to click OK. From here, we're going to click on Next. Uh, accept the terms. Click on Next. I'm going to leave it as the default location. We're going to click on Next again. Uh, and install. So our VMware vSpare client 6.0 is completed. Awesome. 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 We're going to click on finish and we're going to exit out of this installation and we're going to double click on our vSpare client so we can log into our vSpare environment. Awesome. So uh, the IP address, again, I'm not using a fully qualified domain name. Sucks. I know uh, because I'm not within a domain controller environment or a DNS environment. So that's okay. I'm doing it mostly a standalone box, right? Uh, we are going to enter our IP address that is assigned to our machine, and it's going to be administrator at vspare.local. And we're going to provide the single sign on password that we entered. Now you're going to get a dialog box stating this certificate warning. Don't worry about this. Later on in the future, I'm going to show you guys how to disable this or to get an SSL certificate installed within your vCenter so that this prompt don't pop up anymore. We're going to click ignore for now. Excellent. You can get a nice little dialog box saying that I am on eval mode and it's going to expire in 60 days. I know that. Okay. And we're going to open this bad boy up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So we need to add our two hypervisors that we have up and running as a virtual machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new data center. So let's create a new data center. And within my data center, I am going to call it BTNHD. Now, a lot of companies, their data centers are the name of their domain controller. So for me, if I was, if I already had a domain controller, it would be btnhd.edu, right? So I'm going to have that. All right, guys, from here, we need to install our host. So I'm going to add one of my hosts. I'm going to add uh, 153 into our data center. So let's click on add host. Let's assign the IP address to that host. And it's this, I think it's 153, right? 153, let's double check. Beautiful. Let's give it the username that I provided. And enter, yes, next, no license. And we're gonna click on next. I'm not gonna enable the lockdown for now. Click on next. This is the data center that this hypervisor is going to be installed and we're going to click next and we're going to click on finish. Awesome. So that means our host is already within our data center, which is awesome. The next thing that we need to do is create a new virtual machine. It tells you right here, create a new virtual machine, right? So let's create a new virtual machine. We're going to create a new virtual machine. We're going to do a typical one. Go to next. It's uh, let's call it uh, YouTube. Let's call it YouTube for now. Uh, pick your data store. Now the data store is actually the data store within that hypervisor that you're creating the virtual machine. Okay, so keep that in mind. So I'm actually going to install it on this DB right here. It is going to be, let's say, a Windows 64. Click on next. And uh, the NIC card, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to leave it to 32 gigs, and I'm going to click on finish. Okay, right now it's processing that, it's creating the virtual machine. Once that's created, I am going to right click on this virtual machine. I'm going to go into edit settings. And within edit settings, I am going to go into the CD and DVD. I'm going to go to the database ISO and I'm going to attach a Windows 764 bit ISO. Now, again, 
this browsing the data store is actually within the hypervisor that you're creating the virtual machine okay so keep that in mind so i'm going to double click on sdb and i have a folder called isos and i'm going to double click on that and it's going to attach click on connect at power on press ok it's configuring and we're going to right click on it and we're going to open the console and we're going to power it on awesome so once this loads up now i'm able to uh, create a virtual machine within a virtual machine within a virtual machine <laughs> it's bizarre right it's awesome overall guys hopefully you guys enjoy how to configure and install uh, vCenter 6.0 uh, which is the latest one from VMware I'm super excited most likely I'm gonna continue this uh, and do a little bit of vMotion I'm gonna add another hypervisor inside my data center eventually and start playing with a little bit of fault tolerance and vMotion at the same time so I could get you guys uh, you know up and running with this stuff uh, hopefully you guys enjoy uh, leave comments right below don't forget about hitting that like button I catch you guys on the next one peace out